Well, here we are. Ciao, Elena. How are you? Ciao. I'm okay, fine. So today, so today um, we're going to discuss O Mio Babino Caro and the differences between singing and speaking and many other details. So let's start by you speaking through the text. Okay. O mio babbino caro, mi piace, è bello, bello. Vo andare in Porta Rossa a comprar l'anello. Sì, sì, ci voglio andare. E se la massi in darno, andrei sul Ponte Vecchio, ma per buttarmi in arno. Mi struggo e mi tormento. Oh Dio, vorrei morir. Babbo pietà, pietà. Babbo pietà, pietà. So this is a very good aria to do because it's done so often, right? And the Italian is so often brutalized. And there's so many different choices that we have in this aria when it comes to singing. Um, so right off, I noticed some of the doublings you did at the beginning word. You know you did one on M at the beginning, and it was so beautiful, it was so slight. And if you go back and you listen, the very first two words, in between the first two words. Did I do it? Yes, you did, you did. <laughs> This is a mystery. You're going to explain to me. One day I will understand. But uh, okay, thing. I trust you. Here, here's the thing. The word O is a strong monosyllable, right? This this phenomenon was noted by first um, Evelina Colorni, right? In yes. uh, probably like the 1930s and 1940s. And then she was coaching in New York. She was specializing in singing, in, in teaching non-Italians non-mother uh, language, right, M M mother language Italian, native uh, Italians to speak, to sing. And she noted this phenomenon of uh, strong monosyllables and weak monosyllables, right? And what you did not just so naturally and so beautifully without thinking of it was you doubled that M, but ever so slightly. So somebody who's trying to recapture that will n overdo it and it becomes yes, clunky. Yes. It's like somebody yeah. who has this beautiful tennis swing and the teacher is trying to teach the student, but the student has to think it and it's just not yeah. natural. It's not right. And that's okay. the thing. Okay. That's what's so, so elusive. Let's, let's talk about this, making examples, because I think this is the better way. Because yes. uh, we know that we are speaking two different languages, even if we are speaking English now, because I think my way. And it's obvious because we are talking about my language. So this is the thing that we should understand as we are talking, but as every also everybody should uh, keep in mind while we discuss this thing. Because I understand your point, and but I want to make the example because even Italians do these doubles a little stronger, a little exaggerate, but it is a choice. And yes. artists choice yes. of some artists and they don't do it all the time but just when they like it so you could hear somebody saying oh mio babbino caro this could yes. happen i have heard somebody doing it but or for example babbo pietà or babbo pietà with two p's the first time not only the second so this is the choice of the artist, but it should be O mio babbino or O mio babbino. This should be done correct with no doubles and emphasis. Then if somebody wants, they can also say O mio babbino. It's something that has to do with interpretation, but not too much. Not oh mio or exactly exactly right. So both examples you gave were beautiful and elegant. And again, the the artist, the great artist, will always come in first place, right? With that, 
the great artist will do something that's good and then someone else will try to replicate it and exaggerate it and then it yeah, becomes yeah. vulgar and that's the thing where i'm always trying to guard against that you know the thing is you you have to listen to great italian singers also you have to have the taste to know what you're listening to that yeah, this yeah, is sure, something sure. that's elegant and of course we're now getting into subjective territory where somebody can double that more or less and still get away with it. And it, 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 it's elusive. Yeah, there yeah. is balance. And both of the times when you offered up a good example, they were beautiful, right? And the one, of course, where you're going to voice it for too long, oh, me, or way too much. Yeah. Okay. Now the double B, here's another thing. In singing, I hear in the in singing the double B being too much. Where in singing you cannot stop phonations as much as in speaking, right? So where you every example that you also gave that was good had a forward motion and had a forward arc to it, right? So in in speaking again, uh, or in singing, people go. Uh, oh me, oh Bobby, and they stop so much. You see what I mean? And when I did that bad example, my forward motion stops. So that's another thing you want to guard against. I've heard this thing, and you could tell me if it's true or not, that Italian is a phonetic language, and most people don't have to ask, how do you spell something? Except when it comes to single B and double B, sometimes you do have to ask. This is uh, well, in this case, there are other consonants that have to be uh, considered, like GLI, for example, and LI. If you have YI, many Italians have troubles pronouncing that, and sometimes you write it LI instead of GLI. So it's not only a double that can be difficult to be spelt in Italian, but actually, yes, this is a big trouble for uh, for people who, who wants to learn Italian at the beginning, especially for singers because of the rhythm. So in this case, babbino, oh mio babbino. Well, you should stay on the A, babbino. This is what you should exactly, do. Exactly, oh? exactly. See, my point was, is when you, just even now when you spoke it, the spoken is too much for singing. In the context of the aria, it's too much of a stop. But in speaking, you can do that. And and what when, again, you when you demonstrated the other one, it's exaggerated ah before the B. But it was that was beautiful for singing. Yeah. Here's the thing, like you know, and I don't know if I'm confused about this or not. But what I hear with great singers is when they sing double B, they don't exactly stop for phonation. And it has a forward motion. It still sounds like ball double B. When people do it wrong, it's the way, it's the, I don't know if you know, like the way German or Americans sing tutto. They do that thing. They do this. They go tutto. And they completely choke on the first syllable. Now, they're doing everything the way people told them to. They were being a very good student. Yes, but listen, tutto is very hard to sing even yes, for us. Yes, absolutely. Even I've heard Italians do it. They come into the studio and they would sing it the way they speak. And, I, you know, they yeah. like, would say, you know, you know, you can't do that the way you speak. Right. So in the same way, there's this distortion of like we make English more like Italian. Right. When we sing English. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. So but think about it. If we make it too much like Italian. Then you go too far, right? If I can make it there, I'll make it. Right? It's too much like Italian. It's not, you know. Yes. So shall we keep going? Yes. Yes. And here I would like to say something again, because we have mi piace, è bello, bello. In Italian, we should say è bello, bello. I, I don't know why, but I've heard è bello, bello. This is what I hear when I listen to very big singers singing this sentence. So I think that in this very case, for example, the technique leads the sentence. While we should 
anyway, think about how the pronunciation should be. È bello, bello. It's not e bello, bello. You will hear that. This is what you hear. And it's very strange. Do it a little bit more open. It would be perfect, you know. But this is my opinion. I don't know. Just to understand what you're saying, you're just talking about the character of the open E, right? So we know that it's correct that bello is a, right? Open E, right? But for the vocal technique, because you are here, right? Yes. This, part of a woman, this part of a woman's voice is going to be hard to go blah at that because you're too there. Exactly. Right? Sing the pure vowel, right? So again, they're going to be going higher, more vertical, right? Yeah. But still to me, see, I think I might disagree with you that I hear it when they sing, I still hear it as an open vowel. I don't hear it. The, maybe it's the color, the character. I don't know how to exactly explain it, but that I hear them singing open E, even though they're singing a beautiful technique, but they're not singing the wide open thing. Does that make sense? I know, I perfectly know that the technique is the main thing. But we also know that what you read had to be understood, what you sing, I'm sorry, has to be understood. And even Renata Scotto or, uh, who did I hear, Mirella Freni, they say something that sounds close. I know you don't hear it, but I heard it. And uh, if we want to teach diction, I have to read a bello, bello. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot say a no, bello, bello. Yeah, I think it's the same thing. You do it with certain amount of layers, right? First you start from what is the spoken. But for me, it's like the it's the magician, right? Whatever the illusion is of the, the, the magician, they make me believe that it's a. Eh. Whatever they're doing, they make me believe that it's a, eh, right? And it sounds beautiful because your voice isn't compromised by the solution that they come up with. Does that make sense? So yeah, for me, yes. I, 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 I fall for it. Whatever they're doing, I think, okay, that's ah, they're singing ah there. And I hear it as ah, yeah, yeah. right? Even though it's maybe it's a taller version. However, you know, like you, you can hear somebody who's not such an accomplished technical singer try to sing it and they try to do the ideal. So, and um, it, it reminds me of this phrase in, uh, in music that I heard years ago that only the amateur tries to do the impossible in music. Most people fail by trying to do something that's too ideal and then they fail. Yes. And, and, and so that's interesting. So now let's talk about, you doubled, you doubled the second bello, you did double mm -hmm. B on the second. And, and here's another thing, right? You have the problem of the elision of the closed D e on piace, right? Closed D e at the end and the A. Eh. So, the other way to understand in the singing that there's an a ah at the end of the piace is to double the beat. Okay? Mi piace bello, bello. Mi piace bello, bello. Now you understand that the a ah is elided into yeah. the beat, right? There's an elegant way to do both, right? And again, if you do too much. So again, we're presenting our, our listeners with these choices. Sometimes it's going to work for one person. It's not going to work for somebody else, right? And again, failure comes from it's like this. No, you know, there, there, are, there are these nuances. And, and it, I don't want to be too complicated, uh, but sometimes when you say mi piace bello, and you say and you say it too much, it mm, it sounds uh, very like a dialect, you know, too strong. There are certain words that can be doubled even a little bit stronger and others that sound a little bad. And this is uh, cultural. You should live here or have a great experience uh, of living in Italy to feel that, to know what an Italian would feel while listening to that double that has not to be doubled. Sometimes, for example, Pietà can be said a little more longer because it sounds good. So it's not just a matter of rhythm. It's also a matter of 
a matter of culture, you know. But this cannot be taught, I think, unless we just go through all the dialects of Italy. <laughs> and it's, it's impossible, you know. We should ask other teachers from all over Italy to help us, to help us because uh, it's very hard as a as a purpose but it's interesting so it's, i mean it's possible though you agree that a person could listen to there are especially with this aria there are probably uh, at least 20 examples of very fine uh very fine uh, performances of this by, so by, with very very good yeah. italian and they're all different uh, uh, they're all double differently yeah. right but a person could listen to all of those and assimilate that. Yes. Again, we are we agree on on this uh, on the fact that uh, the and, student and, should and, listen to other singers. And, Very and also, I wasn't in any way suggesting that overly strong B. That's too much. That's crossed the line, right? That would be obvious to somebody with a mu with musical sensibility. That yeah, that yeah. You know, that wouldn't. That, that wouldn't be acceptable to, to sing it that strongly. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. But I made that example because it's very obvious, but probably there are others that are less obvious. And so that's why I think um, I have been told when I started learning a technique that I shouldn't listen to anybody. Like you said, uh, on when we were talking about Caro Mio Ben, you said something like this. We shouldn't listen to other uh, singers because we are going to simulate their mistakes or their, uh, I don't know what. This is something, you, you listen to your own voice, you just do that. And, okay, but this is not, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, but you get very bad advice because it, it discounts the people who learn, you know, there are people who are auditory le learners, there are people who are kinesthetic learners, and there are people who are cognitive learners, there are people who are visual learners. And if you're just sight reading, like there's this, there's this, again, there's this ideal way of teaching in the classical world that everybody's going to become a sight reader and you're going to learn solfege and learn rhythm. And you're going to just give the person a piece of music and they're going to spit back to you this very idiomatic, beautiful style. And imagine doing that in jazz where you're, you're supposed to hear it and do it. And then there's no feeling. Well, what are you doing then by, oh, by except for painting? It's like painting by numbers, right? All of the all of the ways of learning should be encompassed. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic, the feeling, and using your brain. All four. It's again, you said it's yourself. It's a cultural thing. How is somebody going to absorb a cultural thing by not listening to anybody? Absolutely exactly. impossible, right? Yes. So, so that that's that's that you know that's all very important. I think we're bringing up these 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 very important points. Let's talk about yeah. the CC the CC line because you have choices. The word C is a strong monosyllable. Okay. okay. It causes phrasal doubling depending on the user, right? Okay. Puccini has actually made a choice for you because he's linked CC. So he's linked. So see what I mean? The, the chi got doubled. No, because I've heard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Say. Exactly. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. So, so people tend. So, so I'm, I'm not saying that that great singers don't take the choice. It's just like a great actor, like when there's a stage direction. A great actor sometimes ignores the stage direction and still comes up with gold, right? So singers ignore that and still come up with something beautiful. That's my point, right? But that's the choice he's made for you in the music. Yes, but, but right? say, si, si, ci voglio andare. It's very hard to sing it. It's very hard to say the E after the chi. It's very difficult. So the, if the, the very big singer that, and I've heard many, I'm not going to say, to say them all. Yeah, it's just C, 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 voglio andare. The C or the, no, I'm sorry, the C. Let's say it in Italian. Otherwise, we're going to 
mess things because they're C, C, C. We understand nothing. So it's C, C, yes, yes. C, C, yes, yes. Okay, we say C, C. Then a little pause and silence. Ci voglio andare. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I, I think we agree. I think we agree. Here's the other here's the other concept. And this was told to me by Corradina Caporello, right? She's from Rome. She's the coach at Juilliard. I had a lot of conversations with her. She said, you want to avoid too many S's in the theater. So composers, when they make these choices, they're trying to avoid the messiness of careless singers. You understand? Yes, I do. So the danger is, you see, it's, a, yeah. you know what I mean? it's, 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 it's brutal, right? If you do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? And all the examples you did were very elegant. Again, you did it and it was so beautiful and so elegant, right? So I, I think we agree. And, and not only that, but there are many ways that somebody can do this. Now, there's another thing that happens is that this is very rhythmic. And the vowels are not very long in this sentence. If you say it, watch. If you say it again, how bouncy. Yeah, it's, and th that's why it's very hard. C, C, ci voglio andare. You see, and it does like a, a, what the, it, 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 there's a girare, right? It goes around. There's like a tour yeah. in your mouth. That's the hard thing for Americans to do to get as much flesh motion that you have naturally as an Italian speaker. That's one of the big difference of you know, you know, in English this, in Italian. I'm sorry? I think that some Italians, I have been working on, on my pronunciation a lot because when we speak, we speak so fast that we're not pronouncing like this. I mean, we have to know what we're doing, and even Italians have to practice this. I can understand that it's not so difficult because we say it and we perfectly know what we are saying. So, pronunciation versus pronunciation versus meaning. Meaning helps pronunciation. So this is very easy for us in this sense. C C C voglio andare. It's quite easy, but. We have to practice it. Otherwise, we do. Si, si, ci voglio andare. Si, si, ci voglio andare. Si, ci voglio andare. See, you, well, you, you're, you're, describing, you're describing the same phenomena that happens when an English speaker sings in English, right? We have to work just as hard. Here, the other thing is that audibility, audibility is the threshold of artistry. So if somebody can't perceive the word, you can't be artistic. So the first thing you have to do is put the word out into the theater. And then after that, you can work on the elegance and everything else. It might be too much. Exactly, right? So, so, so all of these things are, are, are what are important. Um, but the, there's, see, the thing is, is that people's mouths don't move fast enough at the beginning. And on top of it, they're taught that everything is long. So they have this idea that the Italian is, and it's more like that. And they over mouth they over mouth it in the wrong way and they under mouth it in a different way. Instead of that it's sharper and bouncier yeah, and yeah. spinning around. Right? Yes. Does that make sense? So that's something I would like to point out to our listeners. That you have to listen very carefully to Italians when they speak or when they sing and to to replicate that. So what else? Se la massi indarno, indarno, you, this is a word that you will never hear because nobody pronounces the, the, the consonants here. It's very hard, obviously, because of the, of the melody. But if you listen to how it is sung, you will never hear indarno. You would hear iao. That's what you hear. It is because of the melody. It's very hard to sing. But Tebaldi, yes, right? Yes, but because I know it, I Tebaldi is the, the one that pronounces better. Or Scotto, too. Scotto would be... Even Scotto, even Scotto but 
and, and also Mirella Freni. These are the three that really pronounce very well with a very with a big technique, you know, <laughs> wonderful technique. Because uh, you can understand that they are following the sound, but the sound has a, a form through the vowels and consonants. But of course, there are moments where you cannot hear the language really as it sounds when you speak. So <laughs> if I say, ese la masinar, in, uh, sorry, narno, ese la masindarno, you will never, I should say, in dar no, in dar no, you will never hear that. <laughs> you will never hear that. Because the so R. Is, this R. Is the, the, the last bit, though, is a very good technique for singing because you're putting everything on the right syllable. But you're reminding me of something. This double S going across the octave leap yeah, is yeah. very difficult because they have to do. Right? So. If you do it the way you speak, you're going to bleed the bottom register into the top register. You're going to affect the jaw negatively as you go up. And and you, you so there are all kinds of bad things, right? So you have to go. You have to kind of separate with. I'm exaggerating. Of course, that separation is not something that you'll hear when somebody good does it. But that's what they're doing. They're not, there's no strisciando, yes. there's no sliding. It's very clean, but yet it's very legato and beautiful when somebody who's very, very accomplished does it. Does yes, uh, it would sound, it would sound uh, dividing syllables. E se la ma si. E se la ma si. So As, this whole yes. S sounds double, but it's just shorter. If you compare it with when I read it, a la masse. This is yeah, what you read when you yes. are or when you are an actor, an actor. But if you are a singer, you have of course to make it a little, a little shorter. And here comes the rhythm of the melody. Because at this point, the rhythm of the melody leads the length of the S. Because if you know that we sing on vowels, so vowels are the main important, most most important part of the word for singers. But without consonants, we know that we understand nothing and we need them because this is a language. So we have to understand how long this S can be. It's just a matter of rhythm, as we said before. So yes, the ends in indarno. Right, and the R, yeah. right? The R that I hear mistake all the time where people do and then they come down, right? So they do everything right. They go in no, and then they, <laughs> they come down to there, yeah. right? Yeah. The R rolls, the R rolls because it touches a consonant, and the R is in the pitch of the music that you're singing. Yeah, while they should simply indarno and so, R and N be close and go to the O. Indarno. But this is probably difficult because the R has to be rotating very fast and they have the N. So probably it's very hard to say it so fast. But they should practice rno, 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 rno. This is what they should do. There's a channel, it's called Linguisticator, mm -hmm. ling, ling, Linguisticator, and they, they have a, a, a very good tutorial on how to trill an R. And that's where I usually send people. I'll go there and see. It. Okay, so speaking about R's, Andrei sul Ponte Vecchio. Andrei. Yes, yes. Do you that, have that's anything beautiful. To that's beautiful. No, if somebody can roll that R and on pitch, it's so beautiful. Right. The thing that everybody makes a mistake is that this is piano. Mm -hmm. And everybody does this vibratissimo and, you know, express, you know, with lots of expression. And they're, Andres. And what Puccini wrote was, uh, you know, Andres sul ponte vecchio. <laughs> so, so soft. 
Yeah, and the orchestra's to... soft there. The orchestra, everything gets dolce and soft, right? And you really, the, mo the, 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 the be some of the best sopranos sing that way. Sing yes, it yes, it's very, yes, when it is, yeah. it is soft. It, it is very difficult, but it's wonderful. Yes, and it it's has to be soft. resonance. They come right out over the orchestra in that point. Because it's, it's, you know, the orchestra is very light there. He, he was very, very kind to the soprano in this. Yeah. And then here again, ma per buttarmi in arno. Now you don't you don't say I said a double P because I didn't. Ma per buttarmi in arno. That's yes, that's a double it's P because of the space. Double. Yes, it's a double P because of the space. Okay, that's what okay. I, the problem is again, I wrote it because I have to write it somehow. When I write it, it becomes exaggerated, right? It's like the most beautiful thing in the wrong hands. You know, you have a race car and you let a bunch of clowns drive it, bad things happen. <laughs> so, so in this, you did above double P and it was beautiful and it was elegant, it was musical, but you don't believe me. You know what? You know, we are so used to say what we read that if I don't see a double P, I don't hear it. That's not double to me, but I understand what you mean. That's why all every time I find a double that I'm not that I I don't hear, I tell you <laughs> because to me you're, you're reasonable. You can discuss these things with me in a rational manner. I think that this is one of the situations when we think different, but I understand your point again. I understand why you write it down, but I have to underline that this is not a real double. We could call it, I don't know, uh, well, phrasing double you called it, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Double-double or it's real the, double, I don't it's, know. It's the, it's the invisible code. It's yeah. the invisible code that's there. That It's like a little bit of red pepper. You know, if you put too much, it's too much. Yeah. Or it's a little bit of it's a little bit of salt, but you know, if you put too much, it's like everything. It has to have a balance, and for it to be beautiful, it, and for it to be artistic, it, it, the things that are not beautiful are not good, not elegant. I'll go on now. Sorry if I rush into this this <laughs> sentence. No, but I I just my eyes. Mm, fell on the mistrugo. Mistrugo. The, the, problem with, um, the problem with mistrugo is tough because you have the S, right? And it blows your vocal cords apart, yes. right? So I would, I would ask people to practice on voice. You're not going to sing Z, but if you practice, mistrugo, right? Mistrugo, mistrugo, I mean, and then you go back to unvoiced S you'll have a beautiful, beautiful motion across that. Again, the idea that so much S is ugly in the theater. So that has to be negotiated very, very, very yes, carefully. Yes. You don't want the audience to think that you're doing D instead of T. Absolutely not. But to practice, it's great to get the jaw motion. So let's keep going. Mi struggo e mi tormento. You did a slight double M. Mi struggo e mi tormento. It's not a double. <laughs> that time, no, because you are aware. I like it when you're not thinking and you just speak, because then it's the most natural. Oh, Dio, vorrei morire. Right. So Here we there, is a, there is a case for God, the double D, right? For, for, for God. Yes, okay, okay. But we have a word in Italian that it is, oh, Dio. And uh, oddio is well, like saying "Oh my God," but uh, it's it's just one word, O double D I O, and it exists. So in this case, we don't have that word. We have oddio, and I noticed uh, you have to consider that Italians, in general, not all, but in general, they are very Catholic, and when they say the word "dio." They don't like to say it strong because they cannot. So is there a way, my question, right? My question for you, is there a way to say, oh, 
See what I mean? Right? You understand? Right? I could do it. I could do it like bestemiade, right? Oh, <laughs> Right. Yes, but this happens. This can be. Right. And I can also do portamento, not sriciando. Right? Here's the thing, it's always the nuance. It's I always. understand, but that's why we're always underlining this. Because anytime you listen to me speak in Italian, you would say, this is the double I'm in. And when I tell you, this is not a double, I'm saying to you, this is not a written double. And I don't hear it, but it's okay. Because if it, this is useful for you to say that, because you know that your students need that, this is what we are doing here, <laughs> I think, right? Okay. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate I, that very much. Are you joking? <laughs> no, I'm not joking at all. Oh, okay. I'm not joking at all. No, this is a very, I mean, this is, that's a, such a very important point, right? If I'm speaking to Italians, they're going to think I'm crazy for putting that in there. Yes, right? sure. Because I'm having a hard yes. time understanding this. Because I know that these doubles you talk of are something that uh, sometimes we decide to do. And so you will hear it a little longer. But sometimes we don't. It's obvious because you see, I, you say I'm saying it so so often. And I, I, I'm not aware of that. I don't hear it. So uh, obviously it has a meaning to you and you have already experienced it with your students. So this is important. We have to be aware of that. Mm, but I want to say that I don't, I don't hear it. And, um, it's, and most of all, we can decide to do these doubles that are not written. Many Italians do them a little longer, but not too long. Otherwise it sounds uh, too strong and it's not elegant. So there's a yeah. middle way between the yeah. one that we don't understand we are doing and the one we want to do. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that, that's, that's been my point all along. And it's very interesting uh, exercise to do this, right? Play a whole bunch of recordings and don't say who's singing. Just play the recording. And you, all, the only thing you have to say is Italian or not Italian. Mm -hmm. And then you think about what is the thing that makes me hear? Is it the vowels or is it the consonants? consonants that makes me distinguish Italian because it's the doubles yeah. with, to the last one babbo pietà pietà yes so you doubled after the truncation because it's pietà de right the real word pietà de in old in old Italian right it's a truncation uh, truncata right a, a truncated word causes a phrasal doubling pietà See, there it is. Echo. <laughs> Double. Let me hear it. Pietà, pietà. It's the space that's the double. It's the space. It's the. I got it. You know, so when you hear the suspend sound, like tutto, to you it's yes. double. Yes. Uh, so you don't say two P's. You say this. You actually say this in your own video. I mean. One of the things when I watched your video was that the way you explained double T was perfect. I, you know, I saw that you, you know, I mean, you, of course you understand how to say it, you're Italian, right? But well, well. you understood how to explain it to your audience because you don't do two T's. You go up to the T and you stop in silence. And it's, it's a silence. It's just like, oh, Dio, right? It's not lots of strong D and it's not a strong attack. It's the silence. And in fact, the more uh, the more espressivo it is, the longer the silence. Yes. Right. So, well, now you've made it to the end of another video. And if you feel you've benefited from our work and we have saved you a lot of money, why not head over to Patreon or Subscribestar to support our work? There you may donate as little as a couple dollars a month. Your support is very appreciated and helps us very much in the creation of new videos. Also, you may support us by subscribing, sharing, and liking the videos. Sharing especially helps YouTube recognize that this channel is relevant. Remember that nothing takes the place of a great live coaching. So why not show off your new Italian pronunciation skills to your coach or teacher? Your coach or teacher will be very happy 
to be able to now spend more time on music rather than pronunciation. Well, this has been great again. So thank you for spending the time with me and we'll see you in the next video. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Ciao. Bye -bye. Ciao, everybody. Bye. Ciao, Ciao cantanti.